You know, for a film called The Wild Goose Lake, I would pretty much assume that your stereotypical lukewarm ignorant douchebag of northern UK from somewhere like Dover or Staines will be like, Ah, oh, The Wild Goose Lake, isn't it a porno? <laughs> So, The Wild Goose Lake is the new film written and directed by Diao Yinan, one of the uh, directors, no, in fact, the director, sorry, of one of my favourite films of 2014, Black Coal, Thin Ice, also known in, known in French, sorry, as Black Coal. Anyway, um, he is known for making, uh, well, he won his award at the Berlin uh, Film Festival for that movie, Black Coal, Thin Ice. And when I first saw the film, I thought this was absolutely brilliant and I really cannot wait to see what the director has to offer next. Um, he makes films that uh, are both ma mainly like neo-noir thrillers and I absolutely adore. I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of neo-noir and um, it's got everything I like in that movie anyway, in Black Hole Thin Ice. It has everything pretty much that I like in it. The nightlife, uh, visual neon sort of colorish style that is similar to the films of, let's say, Nicholas Winding Refn and uh, Gaspar Noé for that matter. But um, it also has the fan fatales. There's a sense of mystery going on, and it's shot like this really original, like documentary style, like matter of fact, sense of filmmaking, right? So anyway, um, he's got his new film, for this, which was released last year at the um, in France um, at the Cannes Film Festival. And it got mixed reviews when, uh, when it was first released. But from what I saw from the trailers, I was so like, I want to see this immediately as soon as it's out on cinemas in France, which was like last December, uh, back in 2019. And I had to literally travel all the way to France to go and see this film. And I paid uh, like a, only like three euros or three to four euros. It was very cheap. Um, and it just says pretty much about the massive differences between culture and consumerism in the United Kingdom and France now, doesn't it? Eh? So anyway, The Wild Goose Lake, um, what did I think about the movie? Well, I have to admit, I thought it was a lot of uh, delightful pleasure from my own personal opinion because I'm a huge neo-noir fan and from uh, this kind of film, it basically ticked in all the boxes that I want pretty much from a neo-noir. Um, it might not be slightly as good as Black Cold Thin Ice because it lacks that sense of um, mystery to what were, whereas Black Cold Thin Ice had, basically. Um, but I can't deny it. Um, the, there is, the other issue I had with the Wild Goose Lake was that I've written down some notes just in cases. Um, is that it is a very, even first time around seeing it, I've seen it twice now to really try and discover more about what it is I did and didn't like about uh, the movie, right? Now, what I, I'll start with what I didn't like. What I didn't like, well, not really what I didn't like, but the film is incredibly uh, flimsy, right? Now, in the rare case of The Wild Goose Lake, the Chinese uh, neo-noir thriller, um, it's that... Despite the fact it is a flimsy film, and it's rare nowadays where you find flimsy films that stand out, The Wild Goose Lake, on the other hand, certainly stands out. Because I think it's got something to do with its direction and its stunning, beautiful cinematography. It's shot mainly at night. Most of the movies, there's like a handful of daytime sequences, right? But it's shot mainly at night, and lots of like, static still shots where it's like shot with like the director will do on purpose for example there's one terrific shot where you've got um the protagonist standing holding like a lighter and by the way the sound design is absolutely fantastic especially like when for example the because it's so like trying to pull off so many references to the obviously to make reference to the film noirs and the neo-noirs there will be sequences where characters will have a lighting match and you'll literally hear the cling sound of the light going up to in order to have the smoke of the cigarette and you can really hear it basically right and it's like really fabulous but there'll be a shot where like the guy uh, one of the main characters is standing literally preparing his gun and lighting a, uh, a, a cigarette or something and 
there would be a, like a neon sign in the background, right? A, like a pink neon sign uh, across the, the window and literally the lights are switched off and so that basically makes the entire room covered in, in uh, pink neon. It's that kind of film it, and uh, yeah, so literally from the opening sequences, opening sequence, you could tell this is neon noir, right? It has a terrific sort of smooth guitar, broken guitar playing when the opening credits roll, right? And then it will have like a beautiful shot set under a subway with rain going on. And then there's this like femme fatale who walks up with an umbrella and asks the protagonist, sorry, may I have a light? Now, uh, the plot of the film is basically about a, uh, a gang of motorcyclists who uh, screw one over, over a misunderstanding, right? Over like uh, one lost their temper over something and they have a fight and one of the leader of the gangs gets set up when his friend gets uh, killed and um, is on the and accidentally kills a cop uh, during a uh, battle between another gang concerning theft with motorbikes right and so whilst uh, the main character is trying to steal motorbikes his mate on the other hand who's also a motorbike uh, thief gets uh, viciously murdered in a very, very brutal fashion, uh, let me tell you that. Um, but then he bumps into a bunch of cops, but because Rain gets involved, he misinterprets those cops as the killers who are trying to kill him after they've killed his mate. And so he ends up shooting one of the cops, and um, of course it goes catastrophically wrong, wrong sorry, and he's on the run. And so he bumps into, uh, well, a woman basically meets up with him after he tries to get uh, his wife or at least tries to get caught by the police and in order to get caught uh, he wants to give uh, the money the reward that he uh, the reward that is on upon his head to his wife but things go a little bit uh, more complicated when another uh, prostitute gets involved which is the fan fatale of, of uh, this story so yeah there were a lot of flash there's like two long flashback sequences it's very very traditional to the uh, the film the film noirs of the 40s and 50s which I absolutely love by the way um, but there's also like this B movie quality going on to it as well which is also a really great thing right you could literally tell from the first five minutes, this is incredibly film noir, just to let you know about that, right? But like Black Coal Thin Ice, there are a lot of, um, how should I put it, like documentary style, like filmmaking, yet drenched in this neon soaked underworld of absolute sleaze and sweat. But in the same time, unlike, say, a film from Sion Sono, a Japanese filmmaker known for his incredibly vicious amount of sleaze and violence, right? And let or a a Michael Bay movie also known for his sleaze and sweat. This one on the other hand is all of that combined with Nicholas Winning Reffin's terrific visual style mixed with Wong Kar Wai's beautiful visual style, um, all but in entirely of its own sort of thing and um, it's unique as far as the way it looks. Literally, it's like a beautiful ice cream, this movie, the way it looks. You literally want to lick the screen because it's so absolutely stunning to literally visualize. It's terrific to see in the dark as well, and make sure you've got a, a uh, big screen to see this because it's now available on Mubi. So yeah, do check it out. Uh, really worth a watch in, in, uh, on, on a screen, not on the bloody telephone, right? So anyway, also, which is really interesting is that from a second time around uh, seeing this, I started to notice a couple of really interesting things, right? It's a film, not necessarily like reference movies in the sense that silence is the ultimate key for giving the strength of the film, let's say, for example, like Driver Only God Forgives. Just like Black Coal and Thin, uh, Black Coal Thin Ice, The Wild Goose Lake will have sequences where, um, actions are more important than words right so there are scenes where there is lots of silences but it all feels necessary to what is going on because it is shot like this very matter-of-factly kind of style there will be scenes where like the, di the, the director is really concerned of of like how does this character go from point a to point b there will be rare uh there'll be moments where he would skip at certain points of that uh, of that moment when we'll get the audience confused but however if you're paying strong attention you'll start to focus and start to really clearly understand what is actually going on and it's not relied on the dialogue there will be moments of tension uh, of whether or not that person could be 
uh, a a traitor or is that person to be trusted is the is one of the female characters working for the police is she working for the uh, crime uh, criminals who are trying to uh, murder uh, our hero the protagonist who's getting hunted down by the police as well um, but it's filled with even though all this comes across as really interesting or maybe somewhat you've seen this all before it is uh, um, uh, a, it is flimsy and it does lack a sense of depth to that regard. But what elevates all of this is just the absolute stunning cinematography again and its method of filmmaking which leaves you compelled despite what the, uh, the lack of depth of this actual uh, premise and authenticity and of this uh, whole arc of the movie. Um, so there are like mo many, many, many terrific sequences um, involving one is a uh, dance shoe sequence where uh, our female uh, character basically goes over to try and find our protagonist with the help of the protagonist's wife right and she walks into like a um, disco dance of these people and of course it's set at night why would it be um, why wouldn't it be sorry so there's all these guys uh, all these people who are who are like dancing to Rasputin by Bonnie M and they're like dancing to, with like these glowing neon shoes and it's they're all dancing to this basically and it's it like a background music and even though it's got this it's a crime thriller in the vein of a Michael Mann film for instance there's still ounces and touches of surrealism going on here which is something I really I really adore so there's that sequence of the neon shoe dance basically and it, it and it ends up in a massive in, in a in a shootout um, and then there is a sequence involving a zoo with terrific shots of close-ups of animals done drenched in like this blue lighting of one 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 terrific shot of a tiger a close-up of an owl and it really is very very vivid to literally think of there are so many shots here that stay with you um, and a sequence involving a zoo certainly does as well what whilst the police are hunting down a lead to its uh, main suspects who they are after. Um, also, um, it is also at times very dreamy as well because like I was mentioning about the zoos and the surrealism and the neon shoe dance, there is also a uh, sequence where, um, like I said, there was a lot, there's a lot of quiet, uh, silent moments, but one of the other characters also walks into like the circus like environment and it's completely empty and he's he sees uh, a sort of machine with a moving head whether it's real or not just coming up down up down up down and puts a coin in it for it to play to make noise to distract other of uh, the cops from stop looking for for looking for our protagonist so he puts a coin in to play the music and it's just massive silence and it's just this weird sort of Chinese music playing in, in uh, the background and you get a sense of like weirdness like a little almost David Lynchy but it just fits perfectly with the atmosphere adding a sense of surrealism but yet yeah, investment to what the uh, is actually going on with its doc documentary like story uh, documentary like style-esque filmmaking of this sort of quality especially for a neo-noir so yeah many scenes like that sort of make it very vividly rememberable and um, it's somewhat an art house film in that regard, but then again, you know, there were a lot of films that are, cause for me, I'll get into another topic about uh, the, the balance between art house and contemporary filmmaking, but it has a balance between contemporary filmmaking, but also art house, but a little bit of both in that regard, but it's just a damn good, smooth, stylish movie than uh, The Wild Goose Lake, especially as a massive fan of neo-noir. So um, there's also a, as far as, there is of course um, action sequences, but not in the same way as just a typical blockbuster. This is a Cannes movie, uh, Film Festival movie that, uh, that went to the Cannes, this is a movie that was selected at the Cannes Film Festival, right? So that means there are, like there is a one, um, there are, you know, it is a movie in general, but when there is action that happens, um, it's, uh, it's brief, brutal and absolutely beautiful to watch there is a uh, scene i won't spoil anything but there is a vivid shot involving an umbrella and it really like stays with you and it was it comes across so unexpectedly but fits so perfectly to the scenes and the build-up that happens of the violence it's interesting because 
like Nicholas Winning Refn would say, right, just like with sex, just like with violence, it's all about the build-up, right? If there is enough craft and character development and storytelling, right, when the violent when the violent actions really do happen, it's a massive punch in the gut and then punch in the face in comparison to, say, your tongue-in-cheek zombie apocalypse comedy thriller, right? When the violence happens in this, it's brief, but it's a massive punch in the face. It's bloody, it's relentless, it's uh, at times shocking, but brief, but also incredibly damn cool, okay? And there's a, a sequence that involves an, umbre an umbrella and it's just absolutely stylish and cool and badass to watch. Um, and there's also scenes of, uh, there's killing scenes where you don't see the uh, action. At one point, a important character would get shot, right? I want uh, an important character to get shot, sorry, but you don't um, see the actual uh, the actual action happening, or whether a character gets uh, kidnapped or knocked up, uh, knocked down, or going in a fight with someone. Instead of us seeing the actual action, the camera will be downstairs with the neighbours wondering what is that noise going on upstairs. At times it will literally play with our own expectations of what the action is actually happening. A little bit like Lim Ramsey did with You Were Never Really Here, but unlike her, I believe that Diao Yinan manages to find a good equal balance and it works uh, tremendously well in this case. And um, there's just, yeah, so altogether, the, the Wild Goose Lake is a film that um, I would recommend you guys see, if, especially if you, not only just a fan like, it's not just the fact that it's Asian or anything, but it's also like, if you are a fan of neo-noir crime thrillers, if you're in the mood to see a great, terrific Chinese film, uh, this is definitely one to see, um, and uh, if you love, of course, Wong Kar Wai, and and Michael Mann and Nicholas Winning Refn again or th those kind of filmmakers who use sort of crime at night and who are really good at working much more with their visual sense of style rather than the storytelling. This is definitely for you. It's an absolute treat to watch and it is a treat. And yeah, so altogether I would give this movie a 4 out of 5. It is flimsy. But because of its stunning uh, direction and its visual, its beautiful visual style, it's not one to be missed if you are a fan of those kind of films. So yeah, for me, I love it because I'm a huge neo-noir fan. But again, it's not necessarily for everybody, but it's not a conventional film either. It's sometimes slow for, uh, for mainstream people in certain cases. However... Um, again, if you are really into like that, those kind of movies, then this is definitely one for you to check out. So yeah, if you enjoyed my video, please subscribe, put a like, and yeah, I'll do a review of this movie again in French. And if you want to see more, well, yeah, please um, see right, click right here to see more. Have a good one. Ciao, arrivederci.